And hello, today I've got a very pretty little radio in today. This is actually a Roberts RD60, it's a DAB radio. It's not the newest, but it's got, it's real good. This is a Kath Kidston issue, a bit of a designer one. Very pretty. Unfortunately, it's dead, it doesn't power up. Which is a shame, because the owner's quite fond of this. A favourite for these radios is the power adapter fail. So, we should be getting about 7 volts come out of this. I'm just going to check that now. Because it's, <laughs> it's very common. How we got 7.7 .7 volts? It's not the standard problem. But even when we plug it in, we see that there's nothing on the display. Not a thing. Dead. <laughs> Let's get it open. To get inside is not too difficult on here. The little catch on the side and the door opens. There we have, well, <laughs> the basics. Not a lot of electronics you can get at yet. We're going to have to fetch this module out. They've cunningly used these strap sort of holder pivot things there as the remain retainers for the radio. Clever really. But if you don't know about them, <laughs> you could spend a long time trying to get this apart. It's also going to need these knobs pulling off. Luckily, they don't put up too much. <laughs> I spoke too soon. There we go. And unplug the speaker. Just pull those off. <laughs> that was wedged in. I found with these you can never get this area off. There's just no sockets that <laughs> seem to reach in this little recess. So I'm going to leave that alone and disconnect everything from this side. So the little plugs are easy enough. It's the power. But I need to let's cut that. But the aerial cable is not coming out. And I think I need to get these nuts off here. They're not too tight. And I typically they use <laughs> two different size nuts. Ah. Okay, now what? Now we've got more screws to undo. Well, that just dropped. <laughs> Here we go. There we are. The power for this board comes in through this cable, which is very short. So rather than get caught and tangled with it, I'm going to solder on some more wires onto this side so I can power it up on the bench. And this is where the power comes in. I'll stick it on the back of this induct. That's a positive supply. Test leads in. Positive on there, the negative on here. So let's turn that on. We've got three milliamps, two milliamps. Yeah, that's just stuff charging up. Yeah, not much happening here though. Every time I press this, we get a bit of a. Well, that's turned off. And then back on. It's not totally dead, there's something going on. Let's see if I can probe around and find some supply rails on here. Let's go from the ground here, just poke around, see what's about. Oh, I've got millivolts there, not nothing. It turns out, checking the schematics, this rail that I measured here and had nothing on is the 5.3 volt rail. It literally can see, it just snakes around the whole board. 
Now as that's dead, I've got to get the <laughs> get it at these. Now these are actually inside little tin boxes. This is for like a um, shielding to stop it interfering with itself really, as much as any other emissions regulations. So this is held on with solder, so I've got to get these lids off. Will this work? Oh, it's got it. I'm actually impressed for once. Oh, that's jammed the tool up. <laughs> and it hasn't got it off. I'll try a little bit of persuasion with the screwdriver just to tempt it up a bit. A bit more heat. And working on this small surface mount stuff it's a bit of an eye strain so uh, <laughs> we have to do it under the microscope there's no shame in it it's not just my eyes got a camera on it for your viewing pleasure now that's better now let's see what we've got <laughs> i can see the little book converter chip although it doesn't say the model number on it as i never do it's very annoying this is an xc6366 that we're spying at right now. It says L1A6 on it. Five pin device. Hmm. Let's just turn it on again. Press power. Okay. Let's see what we've got coming in. So pin four. Pin four over here. This is the enable signal. And I'm getting 6.5 volts on there. Okay, but our output is, is millivolts. Not much going on there at all. Got to that stage now where <laughs> to go any deeper, I'm going to have to need the oscilloscope on as well. All the toys are out now. This thing's a noisy thing though. Windows XP. Wow. Get a prior plugged in. Right, we don't want half of this on. Don't want channels 3, channel 2. Boy, we have to go a bit faster than that. Quite fast. Let's just sort the local ground up. Ah, just <laughs> clip that in there. Right, this should be switching its knackers off now. Probing there. Sat at 7 volts. No switching at all. What's the feedback pin on this looking like? Pin 5. Nothing. That chip's knackered. I'll have to get it off. So I'm putting this air on. It's about, was it, 320 degrees? gentle flow of air it's going to heat this all up with the aim of getting this to submit and come off and there's the offending little article oh I've dropped it oh so now I've got some problems <laughs> I cannot get hold of that little chip it's a little DC to DC converter IC it's a SOC 235 can't get it anywhere it's just obsolete so I've had a look to see if I can find something that will drop in. Nothing. Nothing in stock. I mean, this is 2022 now, and we have a part shortage just of everything. So I'm just going through catalogues and getting whatever is in stock. So I've managed to get different ones. An LM3475. It's got the wrong pin out, and it's the wrong feedback voltage. <laughs> How will we do? The original converter chip uses a feedback network here to give one volt. So this is 5.3 volts and this resistor here, this 300k resistor with this 68k resistor here, that generates the feedback voltage, puts one volt on this pin here. And the chip I've bought uh, doesn't use one volt as a reference. I'm going to have to adjust the ratio of these to compensate. Turns out I've got this idea I've come up with at the bottom of this page. I can actually mount the chip upside down uh, and swap two of these over. <coughs> A bit of an icky bodge. <laughs> Let's have a go. First challenge is to get the part out of the wrapper. 
Uh, these things are such a flipping nuisance. There we go, nice brand new regulator there. Oh. <laughs> come back, come back, come back. <laughs> it's upside down, it already knows what's going to go on. <laughs> this is going to be a challenge. Two tweezers. I found out that the pins at this end oh, they will be soldered down. So, see if I can just push those pins down. That's that one. Hold down with that one. Bend that one down. Okay, they're bent down and also this one here is the enable pin. So three out of five will go in. Just tack that onto there and this one down there. This is the enable pin. Okay. Next one. If I hold my tongue just right, the right angle and everything, I'm under the most output. This one in. This is the PWM output. Oh. That may have got it. Good little push. Yeah, that's right. Because it's a power supply rail. I'd I'd be tempted to use some very fine copper wire but that's a bit skinny, you might get a bit of a voltage drop, although it's a short distance. I'm going to see if I can use some thicker wire. just need to put a little bit of solder on the leg of this device. But the theory is, I'm going to put that there, something like that, touch the iron on and it's soldered. I'm just going to snip that about there. This is bodging at its best, people. And hopefully, I don't unsolder the other end at the same time. I think I got away with that. This one here has got to go to ground, which is over here. So another wire from there to there. Same story again. I'd bridge that. Think that's done it. Think it's worked. Right, I think that's actually on well enough. I've got to also change the feedback resistor from 68k to 56k. A tiny little thing, a 0603 package. Put a bit of flux on it. Might help the process. Get that solder wet. There we go. Don't need to see that again. <laughs> Put this part on there. Sort of manoeuvre it slightly. Like that. That's how it wants to sit. Get the soldering iron on it. Well, try and hold it down. Not it. Do. Get the ground end warmed up. That also takes more heating. That'll do. 
Yes, the next stage is to turn this on and see what we get out of it. I've got the current limit on nice and low, quarter of an amp. Hopefully it doesn't fry anything. Let's turn it on. Ooh. 5.1 volts. 200 milliamps. Oh, we've got a display. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> the result. I want to check we actually get a signal out of this thing before I put it all back together. So I'm going to see if I can solder this antenna back on. Oh, this will be a challenge. Sum it like that. It's got the speaker wires in here. <laughs> One on there. And one on there. Let's go for it. Well, we've got a bit of life, but we got no sound coming out. This is not a good sign. I was looking at the diagram here, at the DAB module. It comes to first by this audio switch. This chip down here. So I'm just going to probe few pins, see if we've got an output on that channel, yes we have, and over here, yeah it's got left and right music coming out of there, so it's not that, where's next, uh, through the volume knob, <laughs> that's here, yeah there's stuff going on here, yeah, yeah it's not that, I see three, where are you, pin one, that the output there, Again, we've got good sound there. And pin 7. Yeah, we're good here. Final part goes to the preamp, which is IC2, which lives down here. Pin 1, yeah. Oh, good strong <laughs> output there. Pin 7, same again. Yeah, this looks like a dodgy amplifier. The downside is the power amp actually lives inside this metal can here. So we're going to have to fetch this one off as well to see what it is and what's going on. These <laughs> grounds are always difficult to solder <laughs> and unsolder. Let's not forget they're difficult to unsolder. This can's covered in like <laughs> it's got like goopy wax stuff on it. I'm just gonna warm it up with a hot air and see if we can soften this glue. There appears to be wax that's dribbled out of all these as well, so I'm not sure why they'd have bothered but they appear to have like wax potted it. Something you'd have done on old radios that is with the, the inductors or the tuning coils had to be held still. Didn't think that was a thing on a dab radio. <laughs> it's been, been glued onto this capacitor. How annoying. There we are. Good grief. <laughs> it's that mucky, sticky stuff. There we have the offending amplifier chip. Now we've got the can taken off the board, we can see underneath the amplifier. And we can see the mute transistor here. That looks pretty good, nothing wrong here. I can see you've got capacitors, they're all capacitors underneath here. Not much going on. If I flip this over, see the underneath, or the top side, it's all relative really. Okay, what we have here, this is the actual amplifier chip itself with a pair of inductor coils. Because this is a class D switching amplifier, it's got a lot of inductors, so they're very chunky. That's why they're hiding underneath that metal can. And there we've got the amplifier chip in view there BIQ TI10682. That means nothing really, but um, according to the information I've got, that is a TPA2005. It's going to be a right swine to get off. To get it off, I'm going to have to take these two chokes out. 
these chokes here they got in the way that's it gone <laughs> now we can get somewhere we know from experience this is going to be a absolute ass to get off oh we got movement I think it's ready there we go it's off I thought we'd just have a little close look at the offending chip. This is incredibly tiny. It's what like five mil square. It's um this is a Texas Instruments, so it's a TPA 2005. This is a 1.4 watt amplifier. How can they get it in there? The worst trick this has actually has been steady. The chip's got no legs, just little pads to solder with. Terrible device. The devil's work. That's progress. Your mobile phone's full of that stuff. Right, so I've got a new chip for this. Happy days. Just need to fit it. It's going to prep the board first. Just going to put a bit of uh, solder flux on it. Not much. What I'm going to do now is just touch this with the soldering iron. Just to get that down to a minimum. I'm going to warm that up with the hot air gun again. Oh, <laughs> beginning to see some of the pads starting to turn shiny. That's when they're up to temperature. But the the bit in the middle with the holes, that's the like the ground the ground plane with the little through hole wires. That's going to take a lot more heating. There, yeah, that's the outer pins are actually. Turn now, you can see they've gone very shiny. Just wait for the ground connection in the middle to <laughs> catch up. Come on, melt you bugger. It's starting to go, I think. Yeah. Get in there, it's time to pick up that chip. This is the new chip to check that it's the right way round. Just pull back a bit, let some heat onto that as well. I sort of just let it drop there for a moment. That looks good to me. Put these two little chokes back in. One there. And one there. Oh. There we go. I'm quite keen to see if this has worked. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Moment of truth. a bit dreary. Anyway, that's good news isn't it? Working. Let's put it back together. <laughs> well I like a working radio, that's brilliant news. Take these little power supply wires off that I've stuck on. Where's the other one over here? Don't need that anymore. So starting on this side we put the this lid back on here. I think it's that way round here. Press that down there. 
and that was soldered in a couple of places. Oh. No, it wasn't. On there. Where else? Here. And there. Is that one as well? Yep. Nicely rounded. The lip goes back on over there. Yeah, oh. <laughs> a big glob of solder on it. <laughs> I'll push that down the wooden thing I'll burn my hand. There we go. Nicely cocooned over this side as well. They are a good hiding place. It's a fun part putting it back together. Well, it's a bit grubby, that is. Oh. <laughs> Have it looking like a new one, <laughs> more or less. Now it should be good. Then, fits like that, doesn't it? Just screw these in. There's the uh, smaller one here. Looking good already. I think the knobs are the same. Either one. Okay. What else? <laughs> what else did I do with it? This cover goes over there. Just pop that plug through there for the USB socket. It sort of sits on there like that. What's a small and fiddly these things are? It'll be best to plug this in before I screw it down. And that sits just on there. Half in. Oh, shite. <laughs> And get this back in there. It's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze. Should I have done this before I put the knobs on? <laughs> Maybe. I think the uh, assembly technique is <laughs> favoured. It's called <laughs> definitely wedge it in. knobs back on there. These clever screws back in. Same other side. Oh, <laughs> slightly not lined up. There we go. Now it's happy. Let's not forget to connect these back up. And the batteries go on here. Next up is the handle. 
nice leather strap there and oh let's not forget the uh, badge so pop that in the hole there and over here <laughs> there's two tiny circlips <laughs> these are going to be a right nuisance that could be the perfect angle there for the pliers pliers might like that <laughs> yes I will not be beaten by a girly handle <laughs> this should be working just plug it into its own adapter will it lit up that's promising tuning in perfect Who's gonna drive you home tonight? That's how these are fixed. Fiddly. <laughs> Catch you next time. Well, funny to consider that's all that's wrong with this. <laughs> Just change these bits.